It's timely. It's insightful. It's motivating. It's empowering. It's time with Fred, your inspirational broadcast with host Fred Gaddy. Hello, and thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Time with Fred podcast. This is a podcast that challenges paradigms and mindsets that hold us back. Today's guest is MK Stahl, a multi location fit body boot camp owner and a community manager for the franchise. She's a mom, she's a wife, and she's passionate about helping others to live the best life on their own terms. She's an expert at balancing motherhood and business ownership. MK prides herself on helping others move outside their comfort zone at the gym and in all areas of life. She joins me via Zoom from Roanoke, Virginia, and we're going to be talking about daily habits or routines or creating some consistencies for success in health and business. So MK, welcome to the Time with Fred podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to be here. Yes, same here. That I know is all mine. So let, let's talk a little bit, MK, about you know you're you know describing yourself as a as a mom, as a business owner, as a wife. How, how do you juggle all these activities, right? I mean, it's it's. I know I live with one, and I can understand. But let, let's hear it from your perspective. Talk to our audience about you know how the balancing act that that goes into play when you're you know wearing all these very important um, hats, so to speak. Yeah, that's a great question. And and truthfully, I have to start by saying, when I started on this journey, I never thought about how difficult it was going to be when we wanted to start a family. And so if I would have thought about it more, we would have had more conversations. Would we have done things differently? Maybe. But I'm glad that it took the path that it did. Um, my husband and I, you know, we started this journey to owning our own Fit Body Boot Camp together. And a lot of times you hear couples say like, oh, we're we're family planning. We're talking about what that's going to look like. Who's going to go to work? Is one of us going to stay home? Are we going to have daycare, like a daycare set up? Are we going to have a nanny? And just the other day, I was talking with one of our coaches at one of our locations and she's pregnant with twins. And I was like, you know, my, we never had that conversation because we already had the business going and and we were just like, okay, we're going to throw a kid into the mix and we're going to grow our business and grow our family at the same time. And we're just going to run with it. And that's what we did. And now that my kids are four and a half and almost two, it, I don't care what people say. I think it gets harder as they get older because they get into things. And you know, like my daughter's in gymnastics now and my son's doing swim lessons and they're more aware of what's going on. And, and you have to like make sure that, you have like things planned out for them if you're busy and you need to do something and it gets more challenging. It's easy when they're an infant. It's easy when you could just take them anywhere, strap them in that car seat and go. And so to answer your question, how do I balance it? I ha I have to almost compartmentalize motherhood and work on some days because I can't let the distractions of like what's going on in my work life spill into what's going on at home. Because if that's the case, then I'm always connected. I'm always connected to my phone. I'm always connected to my email. And so I have to intentionally kind of remove myself from that when I'm in that full-on parenting role. And that's very challenging to do, especially as an entrepreneur. And you know, you're the one running the show and there's people that rely on you. But you have to remember that those little kids, they rely on you the most. And like, you're the only person that can do, for the, for the most part, the things that need to be done for them. And so I've had to really get good at like just kind of shutting, shutting work off at the appropriate time and then really setting those boundaries. And that's not something that comes overnight. That just, that takes time. And, and you probably feel the same way with your kids. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're spot on there and you actually touched on this whole work life balance thing. And this is a conversation that I've had um, with my wife and other folks and wondering if there's a really a clear delineation right between work and life i mean we we, we talked about this and we're like well isn't work an extension of life or part of life right because what, what happens is it's that you know, what happens in your personal life can seep into work and, and vice versa right so is is there really a clear delineation or isn't work what we do a part of life as a whole what's your take on that I love that. And I do think that like my work is an extension of my lifestyle because I started 
on this journey to fit body bootcamp ownership because fitness fueled me and fitness was some was a part of my life that was a hobby and a passion of mine. And so as I'm trying to figure out, you know, at that young age of 26, when I started on this journey of what I want my life to look like with my career, with my family in the future, I wanted to make sure that whatever I was doing was going to be just a part of my life, a part of my lifestyle. And it's not that easy for some people. I mean, if you're a, let's say an attorney or a doctor, you know, a CPA, that's going to be quite different than the industry that I'm in or the industry that you're in. But I do think that like what you do decide to do for a living, like it really does need to fit like your personal goals. And do you value the work that you're doing? And is it something that you're able to, you know, get up every morning and feel happy to to put on put on that uniform and go into work and do? And that that's, like I said, not so easy for everyone, but that was an easy choice for me. Like I wanted to make sure that it fit the lifestyle that I want to live and kind of coincided with the way we live our life now and the way we want to live our life for our family and for our children. Yeah, yeah totally agree. And I think that's where the, the, the whole idea of purpose and alignment comes in. Because if you're, if, if what you do, and I, I, I want to be careful in saying this, I mean, there, there are folks who, who do work, you know, just to get paid and, and it's okay, right? We all want yeah. money, want to have bills and responsibilities. Right. And people that are amazing at what they do too. And yeah. yeah. Exactly. But I think finding finding that alignment and, and purpose. I was having this conversation with someone in the workplace yesterday and you know, talking about purpose and alignment. And I, I was telling them it's it's once you find your purpose, right? Well, once you find what, what you're called to do, it really almost doesn't matter whether you're 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 regardless of what you do. Cause you, your purpose, you'll live out your purpose, right? Whether if if someone say is a you know, let me a janitor, right? But then naturally that there are people person. They'll they'll find a way to engage with people, whether they're sweeping the hallways. And I have I've seen people like that, right? They just know how to engage regardless of where you put them. If you put them on the phones, those traits are still going to come out and you know they're going to be able to connect well, whether they're in leadership, they're going to be able to engage with your people. So it's it kind of it, it follows you wherever you are, right? So I think finding that purpose is 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 almost critical, right? In what you do. Yeah. And I stuck in this person like Fred, I I really don't know what my purpose is. I said, you, it's there. You just haven't discovered it yet. Once you discovered it, it, it changes everything. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Let's let's kind of transition a little bit, MK, to uh, some of these uh, traits or success or habits that you have found, um, uh, or ex- you know, whether through your career or what you do as a mom and wife. What are some of these uh, traits or uh, habits, um, so to speak, that you think are important in, in helping uh, build build one or, or becoming successful in life, so to speak? Yeah. So a lot of my success and and a lot of the you know people that I talked to were talking about how to be successful with your health and your fitness and your mindset and just live your best life. And I always start with you know how, the changes that you want to make and the person that you want to become. There's going to be several ways that you can get there. There's several ways that you can, you know, achieve success with your health and your fitness and your mindset and your career. But which path are you going to choose to get there? And does it fit your current lifestyle? Because I, I can't tell you how many times you have somebody who comes into like, I'm just going to use the example of Fit Body Bootcamp. They come into Fit Body and they sit down with us and they say, Oh, I want to lose 20 pounds. And they don't really have a great reason why. So you always have to start there is, you know, is your why big enough? Is that why going to get you out of bed in the morning? But number two is they're trying to take on too many things at once and they have this goal, but they have an unrealistic expectation of how they're going to reach that goal. And to go even further, that would be like someone saying, I do not like to work out in the morning. It's very hard for me to get out of bed. But I'm going to come to 5.30 a.m. boot camp every day. I'm going to do it. And they might be totally motivated to do that the Sunday before Monday comes and they're going to get up and go to boot camp. Well, turns out it's going to be really hard to do that if you're not someone who likes to get up in the morning. You never have been. And you're already saying that from the beginning. So why are you going to even put yourself in that situation? Does that fit your lifestyle? Is it going to be difficult for you to get up at 4.45 to get to the gym at 5.30? Yes. If that's the case, let's not try to do 5.30 a.m. boot camp. 
that's not going to fit your lifestyle. That's not going to fit your current situation now. And it's not going to help you stay consistent with that, which if you take on something that's too drastic, too extreme, and you're not able to stay consistent with it, you're going to be so much more likely to give up. And you're going to give up to like the 10th power. Like you are going to just get so frustrated and it's not going to be as easy to get back into that mindset of, okay, I'm ready to make some changes. And this is, this can be applied to your fitness. This can be applied to like your morning routine. I'm sure you see a lot of that today where people are sharing on social media, what their morning routine looks like. And for me as a mom, it's, it's not easy for me to create this like concrete morning routine that looks the same every day. That's going to set me up for success. Like that's near impossible with my two little kids. And if you tell yourself like, you're going to do that, And you're going to have this strict regimen. And then for some reason, you know, something gets thrown off, which if you're a mom, it's going to, you're going to get so discouraged and it's going to be hard to get back in that mindset of, okay, I want to make some changes and this is how I'm going to do it. And so, you know, that's a long way of getting to your answer. But the first thing that I want people to look at when they're trying to make changes in their life is what is your lifestyle right now? What does your day-to-day look like? And where are some areas that you can realistically make some changes? Where are some times in your day, in your week? And let, let's just really break it down week by week that you could fit in 30 minutes of exercise three to four times a week. And if you already have that time, if you find that time, it's going to be easier to stay consistent with that in the long run because anything new that you take on, any new changes that you want to make, consistency is going to be the key to success and that's applied anywhere fitness nutrition mindset and so we want to make sure that we're starting there by looking at what you're doing now and how can you easily add or swap something out that's going to help you stay consistent with that um so that that would be like you know the first one and again it's that's like not a a sexy fun answer for a lot of people when they're like, okay, how can I, you know, get started on my health and fitness journey? And I'm like, just being consistent with one thing at a time yeah. is really the key. I, I love that though. I mean, that finding your why, I mean, you, you, you hit that nail right on the head. Um, and because it's, 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 you can apply that to just about anything, right? Find, finding yeah. that reason why, why, why you're doing something. And you, you know, you talk about all the, pressures we get the distractions and someone's motivation while it may sound great you know it, it's being born out of something that they really are going through or they're experiencing or, or they really need and so i think the we, we've got to be really careful how we or to the extent to which we allow someone's motivation for doing something and impact ours right they may be in a in a critical place or space in their life and wanting something that may not be what we want and so I think the 10, and I'm very careful about, you know, being, I talk about being careful who we let into our inner circle. I'm not saying we cut off people. I'm not saying we don't talk to people. I'm not saying we don't seek advice and guidance and counsel. We should, but I think we also have to be very intentional about what we want and making sure that whatever we pursue fits into our own goals and objectives. Someone, you know, pursuing a career or doing something or going to the gym, like you rightly said, you're in the fitness industry. Yes, it's great. We want to be healthy. We want to live those an active lifestyle, right? But that style or what that routine that they may have may not necessarily fit into our routine. And this is where I think many of us miss it. The frustration sets in because we try to do something. We're comparing ourselves to others. They may be doing so well because that's really where, where they need to be. We may not. And so we kind of starting something, we give up, we get frustrated, and we, you know, the war is me mentality, things just don't work out. They work out, but is this really where where you are? Is this really where you're supposed to be? And, and, and whose goals are you pursuing? Whose ideas are you following? Mm-hmm. Right. So I think that's a really critical component, which you kind of talked about so, so beautifully there. Yeah, I love that so much. And and you saying how like we're comparing ourselves to too many other people, like that's so easy to do with media today because we're constantly surrounded by what everyone else is doing um, each day. And I often say like there's three people in your life that you have around you. You have the people that support you that are going in the same direction as you are. So like this might be someone like another for me, it would be like another Fit Body Bootcamp owner. You know, they have similar goals as me. They're moving in the same direction. They have the same aspirations. Like we can motivate each other. Then there's the, the people in your life who 
they're not going in the same direction as you are, but they support you. Like they're your cheerleaders. And these people, like you probably have a lot of these people in your life. Most times it's like family or close friends. And then you have that third person and they're the ones that they're really your haters. They're discouraging you. They're trying to bring you down. They don't understand your why. They don't understand your vision and your mission behind what you're doing. And you have to really turn the volume down around those people. Because if you overshare with those people and you surround yourself with too many of those people, then it's so easy to say, why am I taking on this like new fitness journey? Or why am I making this career move? They don't support me. I shouldn't do it. Like they're saying that it's not worth it. So it probably isn't. And it's going to be so easy to give up if you surround yourself with that negativity. And so it is so important to make sure that like you're doing something because you want to do it. And your why is so big that you're not going to let anybody stop you from pursuing that. This is so, so, so good. I think we could, this could, we could stay here like for the entire duration of this podcast. <laughs> but I mean, you know, those, those three groups of people you talked about, right? Our support groups, our cheerleaders and, and, and haters. I mean, they all play such important roles in our lives. And the mm-hmm. danger again here we all have them, right? We all have a support people, you know, people in our in our think tank, so to speak. They're in our in our in our in our inner circle. We have our cheerleaders, whether it's family or friends, who believe in what we want to do. They may not necessarily be doing with us, but they're cheering us on. And then and then that third group, you know, the haters. And the danger I think here is depending on who whose voice is loudest in our heads, right? Maybe you have a support group, maybe yeah. They're right there with us, but they may not be the loudest voice. But if the haters and the discouragers are, are the are the ones who have uh, the loudest voices in our lives, we're in trouble, right? So right. knowing knowing where to turn, knowing who's which volume to dial down, which ones to raise up, and, and who we intentionally listen to, I think it's so critical. And I think if we all identified these groups of people and know what roles they play and and, and know to the extent to which we bring them into our lives, I think lives will be our lives will be, will be so, so, so much um, uh, easier, I think. But yeah, man, what a, what a powerful, what a powerful, uh, what powerful insights here. Other than finding that why, okay, what are some of the other important traits you think that, that we need to have? In our life? Yeah, to be successful. I think um, really just like the mindset of a lot of times, like when it comes to my health and fitness journey and my journey as like a business owner and even a mom, I've often had that like all or ment- all or nothing mentality. And many people, they get in that when they're, again, taking on, you know, a new fitness routine, or maybe they're taking on a new job and they feel like they need to give 110% all the time. And if they're not, then it's not worth doing anything at all. And in my role as a mom right now, I have realized that there are going to be certain things. There's going to be certain times where 50% is going to have to be good enough. Done is going to have to be good enough. It's not going to be excellent every single time. And I'll give you an example of that. You know, before having children, I very much could make it. It was easy for me to make it to the gym five, six days a week. No problem. I didn't have anybody else that was holding me back. And now looking back, thinking about the excuses that I made before children, I'm like, man, I was weak compared to what I am today. And I used to look at it as like, you know, I have to, I have to go to the gym five or six days a week. And if I didn't work out one day, then I might as well not eat healthy that day. Like it was just a wash. And as the years have gone on, as I've become busier and I've realized like what takes priority and what matters the most it's not always going to be like that. It's not always going to be like all or nothing. It's going to be some days are going to be like, eh, and some days are going to be great. And you really just have to fall in love with that process and fall in love with the journey. And as you do that, like you're going to be okay. Those weekends where your child gets sick three day, for three days and you can't make it to the gym or you don't meal prep this week or you don't you know do the work that you needed to do on Sunday afternoon. You miss your team email that you were supposed to send. Like things like that are going to happen. And how we come back from that and how we handle those moments of adversity are what's going to shape your mindset. It's what's going to shape like the person that you show up to be every single day. And so for me, like that has been the hardest part of running businesses raising a family is just getting in that some days it's going to be better than others. 
and really appreciate those high times. And then when you're in those low times, you know, it's temporary. And that is really just the beauty of life, right? We can't keep right. firing, you know, six cylinders all the time. We're, we, we're going we're gonna to fall sometimes. There's going to be setbacks. I did the series on, um, I think, at the beginning of the year, talking about how to hit your goals. And we talked about the four principles and, you know, deciding specifically on what you want, acting on it. Reinforcing really just means that you're you're going to miss some of those goals, right? You're, you're going to miss some of those days and going to the gym and trying to stay healthy. But that really shouldn't stop you, right? But you... You, you get back up and, you know, and, and, and keep going. No, no one ever reached that end goal by, you know, all the time, 100. If you, if you are and if you can, great, good for you. But I think what I'm getting, what you're hitting on here, which I think is so important, it's okay to fall, right? The most important thing when you fall, you got to get back up and you got to keep going. Right. It's really that great. It's really that consistency. Man, this is so good. I love this. I love this <laughs> what, what do you say then, MK, though, to, to someone who may be listening and, you know, the people who are really hard on themselves, right? They want to have it all right. They want to check all the boxes. And, and sometimes I think that can be the antithesis, right, of, of, of success because you feel like, well, if I don't get it all right, if I don't have all the answers, then I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it. And right. so they're holding themselves back or they're allowing that perfectionist tendencies to kind of hold them back and so that they're not even moving forward at all, right? Because maybe they tried one time and maybe missed something and and they're being so hard on themselves, right? So for them, like, it's done. I'm not even going to try anymore. How do you, what do right. you say? To yeah, that's a great question. And I think it, go, it boils down to like, who are you doing it for? Because it, it, it's, it really surprises me today. Like some of the, being that I'm in fitness, and when I'm on social media, like I'm surrounded constantly by people that are in fitness. And so you see these these ladies that they look like they could be on the cover of a Sports Illustrated magazine and their moms and they're talking about their morning routine and how they have three kids and they still balance it all. And I'm just like, ugh, some of them, I'm like, that looks exhausting. And you have to almost ask yourself, like, who is she doing that for? Is she is she doing that for her? Is, is she really happy? Or is she doing that for her husband? Like, is she doing that because she wants recognition? Like, what, who is she doing that for? And there have been many times where I think about a goal that I had or a path that I thought I wanted to go down and I didn't end up actually doing it because at the end of the day, I'm like, that wasn't what I, I really wanted. Like, who who was I doing that for? I think I was doing that for someone else. Like, that was someone else I was trying to please. Yeah, I just, I think too many people today they have this level of imperfection that they want to reach, but they don't truly have, going back to that why, they don't truly have a good reason as to why it has to be perfect. Why it has to be, look the certain way, feel a certain way and be a certain way. And it all goes down to who are you doing it for and why are you doing it? So I think you got to ask yourself those two questions. That, that is so good, MK. Let, let's talk about your business. Yeah. So Fit Body Bootcamp is a um, fitness franchise. We have over 250 locations nationwide. I started as a client at a Fit Body Bootcamp, fell in love with the workouts, the community, the coaches, the culture. It was the best part of my day. And so after just being a client for several months, I looked into franchise ownership and nine months after becoming a member, I opened up my own location in Blacksburg, Virginia. And quickly grew that location to 400 members in two and a half years, and then purchased another location um, in Roanoke, Virginia. Actually ended up selling that location to my studio manager, to my facility leader. And then I opened up a third location with a girl who was one of our coaches for several years. She wanted to open up her own and wanted to partner up with my husband and I. And so we were eager to help her out because she had so much firepower behind her and she had a passion for coaching and changing lives. So we did that with her and she opened up her own location in Ashburn, Virginia. And yeah, we're just kind of still getting started. Our goal now is to help other people hopefully open up their own locations and find young, hungry entrepreneurs that are that are driven and just into helping people and want to make a difference in people's lives. So Fit Body as a brand, like I said, we have over 250 locations nationwide, and we specialize in 30-minute HIIT workouts, so high-intensity interval training, and it's a different workout every day, which is awesome because you never feel bored. It's not repetitive. 
and the coaches map out the workout for you so you don't have to think about it. And we work with all fitness levels. So you can be a seasoned athlete to someone who hasn't worked out in 15 years and you can come in and our coaches will meet you where you're at. So during the session, you'll go through a series of stations and you'll have multiple moves at that station, but a coach can help you throughout the workout. So say that you're, you have weak, weak knees or, you know, weak legs and you're, maybe you had surgery and knee replacement. We're not going to have you doing box jumps on day one. We might have you doing squats on a box and sitting down like you're in a chair. And so we'll modify the workouts based on where you're at to make sure that you're progressing over time. And we're focusing on you reaching your goal. It's not just like an overall goal for the class. And so that's kind of like the body in a nutshell. That's just so cool. So there's someone listening who's been, you know, thinking about opening um, your own um, workout place, you get whatever. Um, is there, how, how do they get in touch? Where do they find information about this? Maybe they want to maybe reach out and ask you questions, talk to you and get some guidance. Yeah. Yeah. They can certainly reach out to me. You can find me on like Instagram at Mary Catherine Stahl, or you can go to fbbcfranchise.com is where you can find out about franchising. And then also I would encourage them just to check out fitbodybootcamp.com and then type in their zip code to see if there's a location by them that they can visit. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have quite a few in Virginia. We have our headquarters is in California. So on the West coast, we, we have a lot of locations over there. Oh, there you have it. We'll make sure we have that information as well in our show notes for our listeners yeah. as well. But um, any final words? Uh, I, I like to give my 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 guests that the final words because you're you know you're the SME here, subject matter expert. I want to make sure you have the final words. Any any concluding thoughts? Um, MK four for listeners. Anything that you want to specifically address that maybe I haven't asked you or anything whatever you want to put out there as we kind of wrap this up. Yeah. Um... I think just, you know, we talked a lot today about setting yourself up for success and making sure that whatever you're doing fits your lifestyle and surrounding yourself with the right people. And I think, you know, there's a, there's like five things that I often say that if you want to tips for getting what you want in life, and that is like, just be willing to do the work, stop doubting yourself continue to always learn because we don't know it all no matter what there's someone that knows more than us and we can learn from other people which goes to my next point surround yourself with winners and then always be true to yourself because you like we already talked about you cannot do something a hundred percent if it's not for the right reasons and it's not for you like you are the only one that can please you you're the problem and you're the solution and so you need to make sure that whatever you're doing is because you want to be there. You want to do it. And so those would be like my five areas to really assess when you want to get anything in life. Yeah, I, I totally, totally, totally relate. Um, it resonates so much. I mean, there's one big, big takeaway for me. It's, it's that question, what is your why? What is your why? And I think it, you summed it up there, right? I mean, be, be you, do it, do it for you. And so I like to leave my our audience with, with, with that one question in addition to everything that you said, which I think so, so powerful absolutely everything but what is your why why are you where you are today why are you doing what you're doing today what is the reason for, for for motivation what is it that's driving you are you doing it for you or are you doing it because someone told you to do that mk thank you for coming uh, on the podcast and sharing about what you're doing leaving us with these valuable nuggets and to you our audience and the listeners you're the reason why we're here our why is you until next time stay well